Hey guys, today we are in the 2022 Lexus LC 500 convertible. I'm here with Tedward. Hey guys. We have been doing a thousand mile road trip around the perimeter of Michigan. And this is one of the cars we've been driving. We've been driving this, the M4 X-Drive competition convertible, uh, a Mini Cooper SJCW convertible, and a Jaguar F-Type convertible. Do you see a theme? Lots of convertibles. We spent a ton of time in this LC500 and it is by far the most comfortable and luxurious and probably grand tourer worthy option in our lineup. Tom, what are your thoughts on this, man? This is kind of your first time spending some extended time in the LC500. I road trip one out in California, up and down the coast for a little bit, had a blast with it. So I've spent quite a bit of time in this car, but it's hard to say that it's a fully like all round package because it's a bit heavy and I feel like it could use about 50 to 75 horsepower to be like a real perfect thing. But honestly, as is, I just can't get enough of it. I just always want to be in this car, especially on the highway. Uh, it can handle the tight stuff as you'll see in our videos where we're like ripping around, but like, you know, it's not going to be your track weapon on, on Saturdays. It's not the intent. The craziest thing about this car is the build quality to me. Because, I mean, it's a Lexus, great, sure, we've got reliable Toyota Japanese stuff, but like, it is so rock solid that there isn't a rattle or a tweak or squeak anywhere in this car. You know, you get in like $200,000 Astons and brand new, they're making noises. They're, the dashboards are squeaking and rattling. There's things that you're like, oh no, like, well, how is this ever gonna get fixed? And they are never gonna get fixed. It's just the way they are. You get in this Lexus and you feel like what we've just been doing, driving over horrible roads out here, and you can do it at speed and then get back on the highway and you don't feel like you broke the car. It's fine, it's doing its thing. Also, convertible life is wonderful, but the reality of a convertible is always a little more of a bummer than you think it's gonna be because it's loud, it's annoying. So if a lot of your convertible driving is highway driving, it's too windy, it's not even fun, and your girlfriend or your partner or whatever is gonna be like, put the damn top up. Not in this car. This car is like dead silent, even at 80, 90 miles an hour with the roof down and like these windows up. There is zero wind buffeting at speed. It's like, it's magic, it's weird. It's like Lexus is cheating or something. I feel like Lexus giving me this car was almost like Lexus saying like, hey, we're just gonna train you to be a PR rep and yeah. you'll, you'll figure it out along the way. And I am definitely figuring it out along the way. No, it makes the top-down experience just so pleasant. Everything about this car is pleasant. The way it sounds, the seats. I think these seats are incredibly comfortable. Definitely the most comfortable seats of any of these cars that we've had today. I kind of compare them to Volvo seats. They're just perfect. If you've ever had one of those like S60Rs, yeah. this is the thing. And there's like zero gravity, there's very little pressure. <laughs> and the ride quality is excellent. Even in Sport Plus with our adaptive dampers, it's soaking up all these bumps beautifully and we're on 21 inch wheels. What I find with the Sport Plus settings and the dampers is it doesn't make your teeth chatter. It's 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 still a very road going setting. All it does is control that body roll, squat, and dive a little more. It just flattens the car out a little bit, but it still absorbs all the things. In the sound. It sounds so good. This 10 speed is fun. Doesn't like first. Doesn't It'll like first. Keep it, you like, there we go. Like, you monster. <laughs> Rev limiter of the year award. Of the century. Yeah. So good. In this engine, we managed to get 28 miles per gallon out of this when we were kind of light footing it, and that's pretty impressive. You get a five liter NAV8 that that barks like this, and you can still get nearly 30 miles per gallon out of it. Yeah, we weren't hyper miling or anything, but it was the 10 speed was doing work, like it was just sitting there at about a thousand RPM, 60 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour through a lot of back road sections and some highway, a few little bursts here and there, some passing. 
But more importantly than saving money at the pump, it's the range. I mean, you get a 21.7 gallon tank or a 20.7, I forget. Either way, you're getting about 600 miles out of a tank of gas. Yeah, about 20, 20 gallons of usable tank capacity, which is, yeah, it's about 500 miles. It's as, great. As long as you, yeah, like on a normal day, it's 500 miles. And as long as that doesn't outlast your bladder, you can really cover some ground in a hurry. Great paddle shifters too. They're metal, not some cheap plastic like we get in some of the other cars. <laughs> you just play this thing like an instrument. What a sound. <laughs> I know. It just barks. Like this one, I don't have to do any theatrics to make it theatrical. Like it does it all for you. And it's different from the RCF and the GSF. It's a little bit more refined, a little bit more smoothed over. It's not as raw and harsh, and the 10 speed is a big reason for that. It's just a more updated, modern transmission. We still get the typical Lexus infotainment here with the touchpad, and it's a little dangerous to use at speed. A little bit. This is the most dangerous <laughs> thing in the car. It is terrifying. You want yeah. to turn on a cooled or heated seat? Good luck. Oh, check out the SC430 hey, over here. Hey, spiritual successor. A little bit of Lexus love. Hello. We salute you. Now, while we're cruising through town slow, check out my, um, oh shit handles here. This is <laughs> insane. I have two and I can really hold on and go, oh no, Chris, what have, we, what have you done? <laughs> it's amazing. Where are we going? <laughs> this is also one of those cars that's just great to drive at any pace, whether you're just cruising along behind a camper van, 20 miles an hour, or you're hustling with your friends on a back road. Seats are still comfortable. Yes. Every time you get into the power, I get pushed back into the delicious plush leather. <laughs> Let me experience that lumbar. Every time you see a sign like that, all the, the only thing that flashes in front of my face is the weight, and it still manages to hustle itself around. Yeah, this hides its weight better than just about any heavy GT car I've ever driven. In some ways with this, the weight is kind of an advantage because it just it adds to the solidity solid, yeah, solidity of it. Solidity. Solidity. Now I'm sounding like the rev limiter. I know. This the rev limiter is like a really sexy stutter. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I ever drove this car, I called it the Japanese Aston Martin. Except it's kind of better than an Aston Martin in some ways. In many ways. And it, like, I've driven every Aston in the lineup at this point. Um, I'll take this every day. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You know when you do like sound effects of a car? to your friends, you're like, oh man, and then we were driving, it was like, bah, bah, and it, it is the sound effect. That's the sound this makes. It really makes like the sound effect a kid makes when they're describing what a car sounded like. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, just as an example of how calm and quiet and relaxing and windless this cabin is with the top down and the windows up. Windows up is key. I'm not wearing anything covering my microphones right now. I have no wind buffeting on these binaural mics in my ears, which is unheard of in a convertible. There's no other convertible that I've ever been able to do that in, in anything that we've driven. I'm pretty sure Lexus has some patents on the aerodynamics required to achieve this level of cabin quietness at speed body does bounce around a little bit around some corners and around bumpy corners it's not the most sophisticated suspension setup good luck squirrel but it's pretty good there we go we save him save him he's All good right. another death free day yeah it's over another day to except go except for the bugs we don't count the bugs <laughs> yeah
first gear blip is just a treat. It's a rare one though. It is a rare one. You get, you get a lot of uh, rejections. To be honest, the convertible is the way to go. The top-down experience is half the joy of this car, and the rest of the joy is just everything else. It's joyful. It's pretty loud, too. Like, you can hear this from other cars. The problem with this car wasn't this car and the sound of it. It was that we have the F-Type, and the F-Type is like a really obnoxious kid screaming at a restaurant. Yeah. Except that kid happens to have really great pipes and is singing, like, beautiful music. But it made this sound quiet. Like, it almost eclipsed how beautiful the sound is and how, like, refined it is at the same time. It's not loud for the sake of being loud. Yeah, I don't know how Lexus tuned this exhaust so well, but they did a phenomenal job. No drone. It's just all the right tone when you want it, at the right revs. And even if you hit rev limiter, just kiss it for a second, it doesn't mess you up into the next gear. Great car. Can we, just, can we say anything else besides that? I don't that? know, it just does all of the things and it's like the car you didn't know you needed. If you think you only like those like brutal, harsh, sporty things or you're a, like a supercar guy, like honestly, if you own um, a 488 or a Lamborghini Huracan or something, like this should be your daily driver because it's gonna give you all the excitement of driving and it's gonna soften everything and it's just gonna be like the reliable dream to get around it. This is a car that you just want to live with every day. You want to take it on a road trip. You want to drive it. It's not exhausting. It's just enjoyable and fantastic to just kind of carry you through your day, your life, new experiences, new places. Um, it's a fantastic companion on adventures and long road trips. I mean, it, it really does enhance every journey. And I feel like... I don't see enough of these out on the roads. I don't get it. This thing is so good. It's in that hundred thousand dollar price range. I think you can. I think this starts maybe at like just over a hundred for the convertible and at like ninety-five ish for the coupe. I mean, that's incredible value for a really reliable car that is effectively the last of its kind. I know we talk about that all the time, but we really are getting to the end of cars like this. Yeah. I mean, I cannot imagine a 5 liter NAVA going in anything else. And if it does, it's not going in anything this good. One more blast. That's what it's all about. <laughs> And you can enjoy this on the street without doing stupid speeds. It's just slow enough. It's just slow <laughs> enough. I think that's it's the, the perfect amount of slowness. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not slow. No, we're it's just still spoiled. pretty quick. We're just spoiled. It's yeah. fine. But like, there's a difference between a car that's going to just surprise you at 110 miles an hour every time you squeeze the pedal, and this, which gives you a really rewarding sound. But also, you know, it brings you to 80 quickly. Yeah, you can enjoy this. You can go full throttle. You can take it up to red line, and you're not doing illegal stuff. It's it's nice. That's great. That's, that is an underappreciated asset to any car that doesn't have 600 horsepower and weigh 3,500 pounds. For the mature, discerning motorist, 